in the agency. But for some reason, as I was presenting these slides, my, my throat started to close up. My heart was like pounding in my throat. I had trouble breathing. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mags and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about my experience with public speaking and my fear of public speaking and how I've come to overcome it and continue to overcome it with the help of Toastmasters. Jerry Seinfeld famously said that more people fear public speaking than they do death which means that if you're at a funeral, you'd rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. And honestly, I was one of those people. I was terrified of public speaking. So if you'd like to hear more about how I came to overcome my fear of public speaking through Toastmasters, or what even is Toastmasters, let's get into it. So what is Toastmasters? Toastmasters is a global network of clubs whose goal is to improve their members' leadership skills, communication skills, and public speaking skills. If you simply Google Toastmasters near me, you will find many, many clubs in your area. So how did I come to join Toastmasters? So this time, about three years ago, I was presenting to some clients. So I used to work at a marketing agency and on this particular occasion I just had to present, it wasn't even a pitch or anything you know super challenging or anything like that, it was literally like a wrap up, like a summary of a project that I had worked on. So I was familiar with the work itself and I knew the clients, there were only like three of them in the room as well as two of my directors from the agency. But for some reason, as I was presenting these slides, my, my throat started to close up. My heart was like pounding in my throat. I had trouble breathing. Um, I just wanted to get out of this room. But I then had to hand it over to my colleague to finish off the presentation because I, I could barely speak. I don't know what it looked like to the outside, but inside I was like, <gasps> it was similar to a panic attack is how I would describe it. And I was so embarrassed. Um, my directors didn't say anything on the way back to the office, but I felt terrible. And as soon as I got back to the office, I just looked up Toastmasters and Toastmasters courses. And I came across my club that I ended up joining and they were starting a course in the next few weeks. So my club was running what we call Speechcraft, and Speechcraft is kind of like a crash course in public speaking. I call it Public Speaking 101. And most clubs will run Speechcraft once or twice a year, a um, really great recruitment driver for the club itself, and then also for new members to kind of dive in the deep end and really face their fear of public speaking. In Toastmasters, we follow what is called Pathways. And Pathways is kind of like a curriculum that we follow so that each time you present a speech to your club, you're completing a different project. It just means that the skills that you learn through your time at Toastmasters is extremely varied and you'll always have a different theme or something to present about when you present a speech at the club. And the very first project that any Toastmasters will present is called the icebreaker speech. And we're expected to present this speech at the very first session of speech craft. And so I'm so nervous on this day I wanted to back out so many times and I was almost crying before I went up on stage. But there was an, a member of the club who was like a coordinator of this course. She took me aside and she just asked me, you know, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm going to cry, <laughs> I'm going to freak out. And she just said, that's fine, that's okay. You know, just go up there and do your best and whatever happens, like, no one's going to make fun of you, no one's going to laugh, we're all here to see you succeed. And just knowing that it was a safe space in order to work on my skills was really helpful. And I went up there and it was fine. I presented my first speech to the club and I've been hooked ever since. And I've been going back to Toastmasters ever since then. So it definitely works. How has Toastmasters helped me? 
in a professional sense. So even getting a new job. So I since moved on from that marketing agency that I worked at and to even get through the job interview process is something that I would usually find really, really challenging just because I would get so nervous before job interviews and I would jumble my words and I would forget all the preparation that I um, had done beforehand. So being in Toastmasters has really helped with my confidence as well as being more articulate in the way that I speak and also um, just being able to think on my feet um, and ask questions is being really, really helpful. So I have since moved on from my marketing agency job and I now work for a big corporate organisation. And for those of you who work in these similar, you know, large organizations, you'll know that a lot of your time is spent presenting both on a small and large scale to internal and external stakeholders as well. And so you need to be able to speak up and speak confidently in these environments, not only so that you yourself are more visible within the company, but being able to be persuasive and to influence people and have that confidence to speak in those groups is really, really important. So many members join Toastmasters because they say that their fear of public speaking is what is holding them back from moving forward and progressing in their career. And in my personal life, so there are always going to be opportunities where you're asked to speak in a social sense as well. So things like eulogies, or you might be asked to say a, a toast at a wedding. And again, that's a really big reason for um, people joining Toastmasters is that they are in the bridal party of a wedding and they've been asked to present a speech. Um, taking on leadership roles within Toastmasters as well. So I have been a part of my club for three years now and for the last two years I have taken leadership positions within the executive committee. So just being able to communicate again with a wide range of stakeholders um, and having the confidence to do so um, has really helped through being in Toastmasters. I'm also a mentor to one of the more junior members of our club and just having that experience to be able to mentor someone um, I'm hoping that these are all skills that can be translated into the professional setting one day as well. And the biggest one of all is just confidence. Um, I think confidence is key both in your personal and professional life and so that has been a massive thing that has come about from being in Toastmasters. Even um, deciding to make my own YouTube channel and I don't know where this is going to take me but I'm really enjoying it. But and I think, you know, even though you're just speaking into a camera by yourself, the skills that I've learned from Toastmasters, like creating engaging and interesting content, being articulate and being able to um, speak into a camera and speak, you know, off the cuff. These are things that I've learned through Toastmasters as well. And of course, they're a work in progress. By no means am I saying I'm a pro just yet, but I think Toastmasters has unlocked this passion for, you know, trying new things and you know, just giving everything a go. Lastly, soft skills like time management, commitment and dedication. So my club meets every second Saturday and unless I have prior commitments, I do commit to, you know, attending these meetings because without putting in the time and the practice to improve myself, you know, if I had just done the course and not continued on with you know, the regular meetings, there's no way that I would have the confidence that I do now. So if you'd like to, um, you know, try out Toastmasters and go to a local meeting, I know it can seem really daunting at first and also our Toastmasters meeting follow a very um, strict agenda and format which can be a little bit intimidating. So I thought I'd take the time to go through sort of what a typical Toastmasters meeting would look like and I actually have a meeting later today so I thought I would film the parts where I'm speaking. Just for privacy reasons I don't really want to film you know other members of the club but the parts that I present I'm happy to share with you um, as you go through you know a typical Toastmasters meeting. So my club is currently meeting online. Um, we previously did meet in person, but because of the pandemic, we have taken our meetings on um, onto Zoom. 
Um, I personally find this to be still really relevant because I'm working from home um, pretty much full time, which means that all of my meetings and big presentations are still online. And I find that I still get really nervous even when I'm presenting online, even though it is a little bit easier than presenting in person. So I still find these online meetings really relevant, but I know that a lot of clubs and even our club have struggled to retain members who don't find these online meetings as valuable. So I'll take you through the structure of a typical meeting and every club is a little bit different but the basic structure of a meeting is pretty much the same across all meetings. So we open the meeting with the, um, the club's president's address um, and then followed by the sergeant at arms who will formally open the meeting. So you'll find that with Toastmasters, we do have a lot of like formalities and traditions, which again can be a little bit daunting for new members. They are formal procedures that we go through, but we still have a lot of fun um, and it's still really engaging. It's just that we have to follow these um, formalities. And another formality that we have is that when we were meeting in person, Every time someone would take the stage to present something, the members of the club would clap to kind of encourage them as they go up onto the stage. And the person who was on the stage at the, at the time would then shake the hand of the person coming onto the stage to welcome them onto the stage which now in a, you know, a post-pandemic world just seems so crazy to be shaking people's hands. Um, but I think when we go back to meeting in person, we might just do a, you know, like a little wave or, you know, bump elbows or something like that. Um, we're, but in, in the Zoom environment, because everyone is on mute except for the person speaking, instead of clapping, we actually wave. So you'll see that um, during the actual meeting itself, when we transfer the virtual stage to each different person, we will welcome them by waving. Meetings run to a very strict agenda um, and we even have a timer in each meeting and their job is to basically ensure that we follow the agenda um, right to the minute so that we keep on track of time. So after the welcome and the opening of the meeting, we then move to the chairperson's address and the chairperson is the person who will run the agenda of the meeting itself. Um, and then we will move into self-introduction. It's important to note that each member takes on a different role within the meeting each time. So the chairperson will be a different person each time. Um, and then they'll hand it over to the grammarian, which is another role. So the grammarian's role is to share a word of the day. And this is usually uh, you know, an unusual word that we haven't necessarily heard of or that we don't use in a day-to-day -day lives. So we're also learning new vocabulary as well. And the challenge is to use that word of the day whenever you speak during the meeting. And the grammarian's job is also to count filler words. And our filler words are things like ums and ahs and like. Um, I have a lot of filler words uh, and filler phrases, I guess. So things like ums and ahs are the obvious ones. But now that I film and edit my own videos, I have come to notice that I have so many phrases. Um, I say like a lot. Um, I say, like if I list something, I'll list it and then I'll say, and things like that. I think I said that probably 10 times in my last video. Um, I also say, I'll describe something and I'll say, and that was nice. Um, so I'm trying to train myself to not say those filler words and filler phrases. And we try to train ourselves not to say that during Toastmasters. And the reason is sometimes if you say, you know, ums too much, and it's natural to say those things, of course, but if you say them too much, um, you're not presenting yourself in your most articulate way and your most confident way. So I'm just very mindful of the way that I speak. Um, um. <laughs> um, so Toastmasters is good for training you to be more articulate and thoughtful with the way that you choose to use your words. We then go around and introduce ourselves and this is our first opportunity to use the word of the day. Thank you so much. Good afternoon fellow Toastmasters. Um, when I think of today's theme of keeping the energy, I think of you know the executives who were part of this, the first speechcraft 
session this morning and it started at 11 it went till one we had a bit of a break and now we're here again but it is all worth it because our new speech crafters are fantastic i think we've got a really really great group and they were refulgent like you could see it in their face that well it was maybe relief but <laughs> when they present so when they presented their first speech it was it was awesome to be part of that so really looking forward to it and for those who aren't in those sessions you're very welcome to join us from 11 o'clock on our regular club days um, just to see what it's like but yeah really looking forward to today's meeting and i'll hand over to arjun and the next segment is table topics and this is where the table topics master which is another role um, challenges the group to speak in an impromptu way. So I'm actually the table topics master for today's meeting and the thing that I chose is agony art, um, which is a really old fashioned word, but it's basically I'm going to get um, members of the group to answer funny questions and funny letters and they have to think on their feet on how they would answer it. Um, this is a really challenging part because unlike the prepared speeches, you really do have to think critically and think on your feet. But again, these are really great skills to learn for things like job interviews or if you're in a group setting and someone you know, hands a question to you and you have to come up with something um, on the spot. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm just sharing my screen. I'll go full screen. Can someone um, let me know if they can see the screen okay? Okay, awesome. So today's theme of Table Topics is Agony Aunt. Now, Agony Aunt is a bit of an old-fashioned term, but it's basically when people used to write into magazines asking for advice for things like their life, um, relationships, their family, things like that. Um, and I guess it's all online now. Um, so people might, you know, post on Twitter or they might, you know, post it in an online forum asking for advice and help. So it'll all make a little bit more sense when I get to the examples. Um, but just have fun with your responses, keep the energy, and you can respond in any way that you like. Serious, funny, um, whatever take you want to, um, I guess, take is completely up to you. And then we move into the prepared speeches. Now, we don't have to present a speech every single meeting. But as I said before, if you want to continue to grow and to improve your public speaking, you want to be presenting as often as you can. And I guess the ultimate objective of a Toastmaster is to finish their Pathways curriculum. So you do want to commit to presenting speeches when you can. Another really important part of Toastmasters is evaluation. So every time that you present something, whether it's in table topics or a prepared speech, someone will actually evaluate you. So they'll tell you the things that you did really great and then give you points of improvement as well. So I'm an evaluator today um, and I'll show you the kind of structure that I would use when giving feedback. And it's really great because for me, I get a lot of feedback around, you know, I speak too fast or, you know, I'm not using enough pauses or I'm not using my hands and being dramatic enough and things like that. So I think it's it's hard to take on that feedback sometimes, but at Toastmasters or in our club in particular, we say that feedback is a gift and you can't grow without receiving that feedback. So then the next time that I present a speech, I'll take that feedback on board. You know, I'll use my hands more, I'll use pauses more. And so, again, it's about unlocking that, you know, that passion and that desire to continually improve yourself and being in an environment where it is safe to make mistakes. You know, we're all growing, we're all learning. Um, but to have that, you know, that goal and that objective to continually improve ourselves, being in that environment all the time um, is really, really great. Thank you, Toastmaster Edelina. I had the pleasure of evaluating Daniel again today, um, and I just wanted to firstly congratulate you not only on completing your first pathways, but also for the pilot of the speech, the digital speech craft. So really well done there. Um, the thing that I really liked about Daniel's speech was his professionalism. His slides were so slick um, and professional. They looked great. And the way he used that special effect of presenting himself in the presentation as well was really, really interesting and made it even more engaging. I really like the structure as well. I'm sure that's why you need to have a list of decisions. Ending on two, let's start the structure. So we're going to one, two, and three. Let's start the conclusion. And then five, four, and conclusion. 
one thing that I would challenge yourself on for next time is even though the slides looked fantastic, I did feel that they were a little bit text heavy. And I know that you're talking about it, I'm just going to use a couple of messages, like, you know, so it's not something that you can use, it's something that you can use, and the thing is, it's not something that you can use, it's not something that you can use, and I think you inspired me, as well as I'm sure all of the other members in this um, session as well, to not only finish our first pathways, I know I'm still on that journey, um, but to also step up as a coordinator of Speechcraft in the future, and I know that's a really big challenge, but um, having heard the lessons that you gave gives me the confidence that I can one day take up that role. So thank you and congratulations again, Daniel. Um, back to you, Toastmaster Edelina. And then lastly, we move into sort of the conclusion or the end segment of the meeting. The grammarian will present their report. So they'll report back on how many ums and ahs and other filler words each member has done. Um, as well as how many times we use the word of the day. And it's not about naming and shaming, it's just being about, uh, it's just being conscious of using those words and trying to, you know, challenge yourself to use them less, use less of those filler words in the future. And then the timer will give their report and just report back on, you know, where were the times that we went over or under. Um, and then we go into the general evaluation. So this is where someone during the meeting would have taken general comments um, and give feedback on the meeting overall and how it ran that particular day. And then we do a round robin where everyone speaks about, you know, what went well during the meeting, what can we improve? So again, it's always about taking on those learnings and doing better in the future. And then we go into general business and that's when we talk about, you know, when is our next meeting, who's going to present at the next meeting. So again, it's very formal, but I think without having that structure and without having that agenda, the meeting could go on for hours and hours and hours. But having that really, um, you know, structured timeline and agenda just ensures that everyone has an opportunity to speak when they are scheduled to do so and the meeting can run as smoothly as possible. So, has Toastmasters changed my life? I think so. Um, it's definitely changed my life for the better. Being surrounded by really positive people who lift you up and encourage you has just given me so much confidence. And I definitely wouldn't be where I am today having not taken that leap. Again, I can't speak for every club, but in my club and the clubs that I have visited, the Toastmasters members that I have met are just the most warm, generous and authentic people that you will ever meet. Just being surrounded by people who believe in you and who, okay that sounds really cheesy, but legitimately people who want the best for you and want you to succeed both in Toastmasters, in your professional life, in your, uh, in your personal life as well. It's just, it's almost like an echo chamber of positivity and it gives you the feeling that you can conquer anything outside of Toastmasters as well. But it's not easy. And as I said before, it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of commitment and you'll only get the success out of it by putting in the time and putting in the effort to present and to volunteer for those roles and to help your club grow as well. And being on the executive committee now means that I get to be a coordinator in those speech craft courses. And honestly, nothing fills me with more pride and warm fuzzies seeing people who were in the same position as me now progressing to be you know confident badass public speakers you know it's such a great feeling and being able to use my story of you know when i had a panic attack to kind of you know let people know that it's okay and it, we're in a safe space and just seeing people flourish is um, an amazing feeling. So if you'd like to join Toastmasters, I highly encourage you to look up a local club in your area and I guarantee that you'll be welcomed with open arms, you'll be plunged into the deep end, but you'll come out so much happier and so much more confident. I will say that if you don't find a club that, you know, meets your needs, um, the first time, you know, look around. You don't, you're not obliged to join the first club that you meet. I just happen to love my club. But if it's not for you, you know, don't be discouraged and definitely have a look around at other clubs as well. If you'd like to know more about Toastmasters and I haven't answered it in this video yet, 
please do leave me a comment below. I would love to speak more about it. I'm so passionate about Toastmasters. I'm so passionate about, you know, conquering one's fear of public speaking and I would love to help you do that. Um, so yeah, don't be shy. <laughs> please leave a comment below. I'd love to chat more. Do I still have a fear of public speaking? Yes, but through Toastmasters, I have the tools and the skill sets and the confidence to be able to at least try, to be able to you know come off mute and give something a go. Um, it's it's life changing. So <laughs> I really, really would love for you to take that first step as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.